In this video, we are going to learn about INSTC, which stands for International North-South Transport Corridor. So basically, three countries are involved in the operations of this corridor. They are Russia, Iran and India. It is a 7200 km long multimodal transportation network. Multimodal transportation means transportation will take place via sea, rail and roadways. It connects the Persian Gulf to the Caspian Sea. And by the way, Persian Gulf is also an extension of the Indian Ocean. And from the Caspian Sea, it goes further north towards Russia and northern European countries. The foundation of this corridor was laid in September 2000, when these three countries signed an intergovernmental agreement. On the Persian Gulf side, Iran has around 8 seaports. The closest one to India is the Chabahar seaport. After that, there is the Bandar Abbas seaport. And then on the Caspian Sea side, Iran has 3 seaports. One of them is Anzali seaport. So basically, once the shipment starts from India's western coast, it will travel through the Arabian Sea and reach Iran's Bandar Abbas port. And I will tell you in a while why the shipment goes to Bandar Abbas instead of Chabahar seaport. Iran has a double track railway from Bandar Abbas seaport to the city of Bafk. From Bafk, there are single track railway line that goes to the capital city of Tehran. From Tehran, the train goes west, east and north. Anzali seaport is located in the north. From the Anzali seaport, the ship will sail through the Caspian Sea and reach the Astrakhan seaport of Russia. From Astrakhan, goods can be transported via rail network or roadways to Moscow and further towards St. Petersburg in the north. As I said, from Tehran, the Iranian railway can go eastern and western direction. This north-south corridor has further extension towards the western side and eastern side. In the west, the route enters Turkey and reaches Istanbul, crossing the Bosphorus Strait and then head towards Bulgaria and other Balkan countries. Similarly, from Tehran, this corridor extends towards Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and also into Xinjiang province of China. The eastern extension was possible due to the Ashgabat Agreement of 2011. It is because of the Ashgabat Agreement, Central Asian countries have a direct connection to the Persian Gulf. Even India is part of the Ashgabat Agreement. Inside Turkmenistan, this route can further join the seaports of Kazakhstan in the Caspian Sea. Even Azerbaijan is part of this north-south corridor's network. Currently, there is no passenger rail route between Tehran and Baku. But there are plans to launch passenger rail route. But as of now, there are rail networks for freight are being constructed that run along the coast of the Caspian Sea and connect to the capital city of Baku, Azerbaijan. It is called the Rasht Astara Railway Link. Iran has faced financial and technical difficulties which led to the postponing of the link's construction for years. However, it is going to be completed in 2023. If there are certain goods that Azerbaijan doesn't need, then those goods can be transported directly through the sea route of the Caspian Sea. And if Azerbaijan needs certain goods, then Rasht Astara railway link can be used. And further, this railway link crosses the Azerbaijan-Russia border to reach up north. Now, you may be aware of the fact that there is a bilateral agreement between India and Iran that was signed in 2015 for developing the Chabahar seaport. And then last month, both India and Iran reaffirmed their cooperation towards the development of Chabahar seaport. One interesting thing about Chabahar seaport is that not only it is much closer to India than Bandar Abbas seaport, moreover, US sanctions on Iran do not apply on this seaport. Whenever the United States puts sanctions on any country, they basically put a sanction on the seaports because that is what is the entry and exit point of a country. So you basically put US sanctions on the seaport. But then if you look at the Chabahar seaport, the main disadvantage of this seaport is that it does not have a railway connection. And maybe who knows, that is why United States left this seaport. If you remember in 2018, the US government exempted India from certain sanctions over Iran's Chabahar seaport. The reason United States government exempted India from using the Chabahar seaport is that India was sending goods to the Afghan government back in the day. Because Pakistan was not giving the land route to India, India started supplying goods to the Afghan government from Iran's Chabahar seaport. And then if you remember in July 2020, Iran dropped India from the Chabahar rail project. The reason India did not continue the project with Iran is that Iran had recommended a construction company that would handle the project. Because India had an objection to that. Why? Because the company had some connection with Iran's IRGC. And as you may know, the United States has put sanctions on IRGC. That is the reason India did not continue with the Chabahar Zahedan Railway Link project. It did not want to jeopardize the whole project, if at all it comes under the scrutiny of the US sanctions. Anyhow, Iran continued the second phase of the construction of the Chabahar Zahedan Railway Link project without India's help. 
This year in March, Iran gave an official statement that the Chabahar Zahedan railway link project will be completed by March 2024. It would require somewhere around $464 million to complete this project. That means India can still join hands with Iran and start engaging. Although there are no official report as to whether or not India is currently engaged with Iran on this project. But then talks are going on between the two governments. Because it is beneficial for India. So India is not going to back out from this. India has to look at the US sanctions on one hand. And on the other hand, India is serious about being part of this project. But anyhow, the main point is, the day this project gets completed, it will connect the existing railway link between Zahedan province and Bafk city. And as you know, from Bafk, there is a railway link to the capital city of Tehran. And towards the northeastern side, there is a railway link that connects to the city of Mashhad. And further, you can enter Turkmenistan. So if you see this Chabahar Zahedan railway link project, it is the missing link of the Russia-India corridor. Although there is Bandar Abbas seaport, but then Chabahar seaport does not have any US sanctions. But then you never know once this whole construction is over, what if the United States puts sanctions on this seaport as well. But anyhow, that may or may not happen. This corridor is supposed to be an alternative to the Suez Canal. It is supposed to reduce the transportation cost between India and Russia by about 30%. And it is also supposed to reduce the transportation time between India and Russia by 14 days. Almost more than half of what it takes to transport via the Suez Canal. And as you may know, after the Russia-Ukraine war, the Suez Canal, the Mediterranean route and the Baltic Sea route are not very friendly for Russia as well as some Eastern countries. Because Europe has much of the control over these sea routes through various policies. So the main objective of the North-South Corridor is to provide an alternative to the traditional routes carried out by sea through the Suez Canal, the Mediterranean and the Baltic Sea. As of now, this is everything that you have to know about the International North-South Transport Corridor that connects Moscow and St. Petersburg in the north to the west coast of India in the south, passing through Iran. And not only just for India, but this route will turn out to be beneficial for many Southeast Asian countries. So Iran is the most important link in between. And inside Iran, the freight that comes from north or south can be diverted to Central Asian Eastern Europe. So this is the geostrategic as well as geoeconomic importance of the International North-South Transportation Corridor. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.